everyone, I am here today for the first time in ages, but I'm here today with my rather belated July book haul. And I'm not learning my lesson at all. I have got so many books to talk about today. Nearly 60. I think if I counted correctly, it's 58 ebooks plus one physical book. So let's get the physical book done and dusted first. And that is An Almond for a Parrot by Ray Delaney. And I won this in a giveaway on Aoife's channel over at Fred Weasley Died Laughing. I'm so grateful. This looks such a fantastic book. First of all, look at that cover. Beautiful. Feels really nice as well. I love it when a book just feels all textured. And, mm. But yeah, this is a historical fiction. It's set in 1756, so I can't wait to get stuck into this one. I'm definitely going to be picking this one up while I'm off work over the next few weeks. So, can't wait. A review will be coming soonish. So now on to the Amazon books that I've purchased on my Kindle during July. All of these were either 99p or £1. I love a bargain. I just want to warn you as well, because this book haul is so horrendously big and I find it really, really uncomfortably painful sitting here for that long and also the editing process is just gruelling and Realistically, do any of you even watch the video that far if I have a very, very long video? So I'm not going into depth on many, if any, of these books in this haul. Sorry about that. You'll just have to look them up if you are curious about any of them. I will have them all linked in the description down below so they'll be easy enough to find for you. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really sorry, but would you want to sit here and talk in depth about nearly 60 books? I need to curb my collecting books per month habit. <laughs> so first of all we have Always With Love by Giovanna Fletcher and she is one of those authors I'm sort of just auto buying even though I probably shouldn't because I haven't actually read any of her books yet but I just keep acquiring them but this just looks a really cute contemporary. Next oh yes there's that auto buy even though I haven't read the thing going on again with this one. The Sun In Her Eyes by Page Tune. I'm collecting all of Page Tune's works and then I will just work through them in publication order. Then we have This Love by Danny Atkins. I genuinely don't actually know how this one ended up on my to buy list at all. I don't really know anything about it either. And the worst thing is it's not the only book by this author on here. So there's obviously something quite key that I am forgetting here. We also have Paper Hearts and Summer Kisses by Carol Matthews. And that looks a really summery contemporary kind of cover right there. Then we have Sleepless in Manhattan by Sarah Morgan and the worst thing of all is with this one I couldn't actually remember whether I already owned it or not and then I realised I didn't so I was like yeah I'm gonna grab that as I've heard you know okay things about it it'll be a nice quick chick chick lit kind of read I think. Then we have Perfect Strangers a novella again by Danny Atkins. Then Just for the Holidays by Sue Moorcroft Again, this will just be another cute contemporary novel. I thought I'd have loads of time to read these during the summer. And then the British weather happened. It's, you wouldn't call this summer at all. Then we have Our Song, again by Danny Atkins. Ten Years On by Alice Peterson. Don't really particularly have an idea of what this one is. It's probably some sort of contemporary chick lit kind of thing. Then we have If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. And I was actually really chuffed to be able to get this one for 99p as I've heard really good things about this book and so I can't wait to get stuck into it. Another page two novel, Chasing Daisy. I was surprised I didn't already own this one actually. I, I was kind of shocked. I felt like I did and then I realised I didn't. I was like, oh yes, better grab it while it's 99p then. Hollow Pike by Juno Dawson. Then we have The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis, which is of course the first book in the Chronicles of Narnia. I read these as a child, but I don't think I read all of them and I don't know what I read and what I didn't and I'd really just love to sit and read them all, quite frankly. I think that'd be such a nice little throwback to my childhood. Then a book that I was hearing quite a few things about a year or two ago when it first came out and so again I was quite happy to see that it dropped in 99p and that is called I Am Marla by Marla Yousafzai. I should have looked that up first, sorry. But I've heard amazing things about this book. I think it'll be really enlightening. And again, it's one that I am hoping to get stuck into sooner rather than later. Then we have Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley. And this is one that I've heard quite a lot of things about. Not all good, but I'm really interested to see for myself what I think of this one. So again, I want to try to get to this one. 
this year. You can really understand how my TBR is this big when I've just got so many books every month and I need help. But the next one was a key purchase, I had to get it. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I've heard nothing but absolutely fantastic things about this book. Again, I think it'll be another one that will really open my eyes and if you've been living under a rock, how have you not heard of this book? Next we have The Rising by Brian Keane and this is some sort of zombie novel. I've been watching Luke play through The Walking Dead recently and I was like, hmm, I feel like reading about zombies now. Then we have Vacations from Hell, which is a short story collection by some big YA authors. So we've got Libba Break, Sandra Clare, Claudia Gray, Maureen Johnson, etc, etc, etc. And I can't believe that this is the first one that I can remember so far on this haul, but very first psychological thriller of the haul with He Said, She Said by Erin Kelly. And I've heard quite a few good things about this, so I I can't wait to get stuck in. Then we have Golden Boy by Abigail Tartalin. And I feel like this one had quite a bit of hype around it a couple of years ago when I first sort of discovered Booktube. It was a very big thing, everyone was sort of reading this. So I'm a bit behind on the times, but I can't wait to get stuck into this one. Then we have Of Shadow and Stone by Michelle Muto don't really have a clue what this one was about. Doesn't ring a bell at all. And that was it for the books that I purchased in July. Quite a few. Like I said, I need a bit of help, I think. But now on to the NetGalley books that I received from publishers in the month of July. And yes, quite a few. Quite a few indeed. So get comfy. First book is 19 Souls by J.D. Allen. And this doesn't come out until the 8th of February. And this is a mystery thriller novel. Then we have The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. And this is being published by Bloomsbury in October. And again, this is another thriller. I'm making up for all the thrillers that weren't in my bought part of the haul now. <laughs> Incredibly. So next we have Blue Monday by Nikki French. And this actually came out quite a few years ago now but Penguin are pushing it probably because they're probably adding some more to the series would be my guess without having a look around at my notes. And so this, yeah, it's quite old. I don't actually know an awful lot about it other than it's a thriller. Ah, my guess was right. So then here I've got the seventh book in this series, which is Sunday Morning Coming Down, again by Nikki French. And this one came out on the 13th of July. Then we have Another Place by Matthew Crow. And this came out at the beginning of August. Then we have Her Deadly Secret by Chris Curran, which of course is another thriller, and this came out at the beginning of July. Then we have The Break by Marianne Keys, and this comes out on the 7th of September, and I'm really excited to have an arc of this. I will read this before publication day. I will, I will, I will. Yeah. Then we have If You Could See Me Now by Kerry Stainton, and this just looks a cute little novel looking at the cover. I'm sorry I'm not going into detail on any of these books at all, but this haul is just going to be too long as it is. And when I go into detail, it ends up like half an hour, 45 minutes long, and that's no fun for anyone. I get backache, it takes me 10 years to edit, and you probably get bored watching it. So Then we have The Ones That Disappeared by Zana Fralin. Dead Girls Can't Lie by Caris Jones. There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this book. I was so over the moon when I got approved for this proof. I'm like, oh, this is... This is going to be an interesting one for me. I've not actually read any of Stephanie Perkins' novels before, but I have read a short story of hers um, in the anthology... I can't think of the name of it. Not the winter one, but the summer one that was out. Was it last year? Can't think what it's called. But yeah, I didn't actually like her writing. And you might be thinking, why have you requested this book then? Basically, this is me giving her another chance in one of my favourite genres. If I get on with this, then I might give her writing another chance in other genres. If I don't get on with this, then that's me and Stephanie Perkins done as controversial as that may be. Next we have Cocktails and Dreams by A.L. Michael. What Doesn't Kill You by Amy Hicks. The Starman and Me by Sharon Cohen. 
Next Earth by Ken Sharp. Lola Offline by Nicola Doherty. Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. And this one I was so over the moon to be able to get as an ARC because otherwise I was literally about to go out and buy it. But I'd seen a review over on, um, I can't think of a new channel name. Kirsty, Melbourne on my mind, has changed her channel name. Something to do with Ravenclaw and reading, I can't remember at all. But on her channel I saw a review of this book in her like, weekly reading wrap up a while ago and I was like, oh my god that sounds like fantastic, totally up my street, 110% sounds like such a fantastic psychological thriller and so I just had, had, had to go and get it that second. So when I finished watching the video I went to look at the price of it on Amazon and I was like okay I might be willing to pay that for a Kindle edition. I'll just check NetGalley. Check NetGalley and it was on there and I got approved within a couple of hours and so happy days. But I've still not read it yet. That's really naughty of me. I will be cracking on with this very soon. Next we have The Border by Steve Schaefer. If I Die Tonight by A.L. Galen. Can You Keep a Secret by Karen Perry. I was super excited to get proof for this one because I read something by Karen Perry. Oh, what is up with my mind today? I can't remember the name of the book but it was towards the end of last year. I've got a full review up for it so I will leave that linked in the cards and also in the description and I really enjoyed it. If I remember correctly I gave it four stars and so I was eager to pick up something else by these two authors combined under this pen name. Next we have Dark Pines by Will Dean, The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel and I've heard so much about this one so I can't wait to get stuck into this one. Everybody Hurts by Joanna Nadin and Anthony McGowan, The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman, Copycat by Alex Lake, My Side of the Diamond by Sally Gardner, Chasing Red by Isabel Ronin, A Semi-Definitive List of Words and Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland, The Walls by Holly Overton, The Accident by S.D. Monaghan, The Forgotten Dead by Tuve Alstador, Edinburgh Twilight by Carol Lawrence, Firebud, Firebud? Fireblood by Ellie Blake, which is the second book in the Frost, Frostblood saga. I've got the first one, I've not read it yet, so I need to kind of marathon both of these ASAP. I Am Traitor by Sif Sigmar's Dutter. The Coffin Path by Catherine Clements. Otherworld by Jason Segel and Kirsten Miller. And this one really caught my eye and I'm so happy to have got proof of this one because this sort of struck me as almost similar to Ready Player One, which everybody loves. So just to give you a quick description of this one, welcome to real life 2.0. Are you ready to play? There are no screens, there are no controls. You don't just see and hear it, you taste, smell and touch it too. In this new reality, there are no rules to follow, no laws to break, you in can indulge your every desire. Would you ever want to leave? Step into the other world, leave your body behind. Can't wait. I really can't wait. This comes out on the 31st of October. I'm realistically probably shouldn't read it until October just because I've got so many arcs coming up for before then but I think this is one that I'm going to really struggle to keep myself away from. And that also was the last book in this haul. Yay! So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me just there if you want to see more book views and other bookish content from me. Drop me a comment down below if you are excited for any of these books, if you've read any of these books, if you think that some of them are like I must read right now if you know my reading taste well. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you tomorrow hopefully with a book review. Bye bye!